let me tell you a little bit about me. I was a student at Penn State from 1985 to 1989. And I think I was at the forefront of number one, women in engineering. Number two, kind of changing the profile of what an engineer is, what an engineer looks like, and trying to break those stereotypes. And by the looks of this crowd, there's a lot of stereotype breakers out there today. Engineering is not a page out of the Revenge of the Nerds. Engineers leads to a number of different huge career opportunities. Engineers change the world. Engineers drive innovation. And for me, 23 years later, I am incredibly proud to be an engineer. So let's talk about plowing fields. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about when I say you got to plow the fields? No. Plow the fields is just an analogy for sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And you're not going to like it, and it's not going to be fun, and you're going to sit back and scratch your head like I did and say, why am I taking a landscape architecture class when I'm going to school to be an engineer? Or why am I on my second or third semester of English when I'm going to be an engineer and not a writer? But all of those learnings will have an opportunity to teach you something. For example, I had to take a differential equations class. Ask me the last time I actually solved a diff EQ problem. Ask me one time out of college that I solved a diff EQ problem. I never, ever used that content. But I had a professor um, that I had a really hard time understanding. And it taught me to go off, work with him, seek to get the information I needed to get through the class, pass it, get out and move on to my next class. So sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Sometimes you just have to, what I'll say is, plow the fields. And I'll give you an exa more examples of how that characteristic and that value will play itself forward many years forward in your career. Sometimes you have to solve problems, right? So you're going to learn a tremendous amount of technical content over the next four years. And you know, I gave you the example about diff EQs and how that I never used it. But I learned a whole lot in my technical coursework that I did apply, right? I learned primarily, whether it be in my math courses, whether it be in my material science courses, how to solve and use that information and that technical competency to solve problems. It could be in a lab assignment that I received. I know that you guys have a, a, a really cool problem solving exercise that you guys are doing now, right? You get like snippets of coursework, and then you have to create, what, a hovercraft of some sort? And you don't have a whole lot of constraints on how you solve that problem. That is so cool, because you could be totally innovative. But that's technical problem solving. The problem solving I want to talk about is a little more subtle. I ran into a situation, it was my junior year, I looked and saw how many credits I had. I saw that I had two years to finish my degree. Um, and my dad was unemployed. So if I didn't finish, my parents had saved money, fortunately, for me to go to school. But they had saved enough money for me to go for four years. So I had to figure out how I was going to complete a whole lot of coursework in two years. First thing I tried was taking 19 credits in one semester. Did any of you all have 19 credits this semester? probably good your freshman year first semester you don't have 19 credits my typical load was about 15 is that what you guys are taking now about 15 to 17 credits that's about normal so I decided that one semester I was just gonna plow it on and it was my junior year so I had a huge amount of 300 maybe 400 level courses in my major so it was a huge load to carry and I worked my tail off I did a whole lot of field plowing that semester I did very little socially and a whole lot of time in the stacks, just, which is the library at Penn State, just getting through my content and getting through those courses. And I think I had six finals. It was brutal. So I learned. I said, well, I'm not doing that again. I'm not going to take 19 credits every semester until I graduate. 
So I started taking summer school, which allowed me then to finish my major on time and move into the career aspects and portion of my life. Now, was that a technical problem to solve? No, I had to figure out, it was a life problem. I had to figure out how to fit all this material in. I had to figure out how to pay for the courses in the summer by working during the day and going to school at night. I guarantee you, if you walk into an interview after four years from now, and your interview at, interviewer asks you, give me an example of where you solved a problem, and you respond by saying, let me give you two. Let me give you one technical problem that I solved, and let me give you one problem that I encountered in my life and how I work through it, you'll blow them away. Because everybody is expecting that response to be technical, not life related. Sometimes you gotta plow fields. Sometimes you gotta solve problems, not only technical, but within your life. Sometimes you just have to overcome challenges, right? I mean, how many people are in here two weeks in thinking, Man, engineering school is a breeze. How many people are going, man, it's a little harder than I thought it was going to be? You can, I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. I know I thought it was harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, so let me go back to my freshman physics example. I was going into the final, and I had a D. And I was in huge risk of having to take the class again. I wasn't excelling. Um, I was questioning myself. My self-confidence was at an all-time low. Um, and the professor said, you know what? Here's the kind of, you know, we're gonna have our final in a couple weeks. You got two weeks of prep. Here's the body of information you need to be prepared for. And you get one eight and a half by 11 piece of paper to prepare for that final. First of all, I studied about four or five hours a night for those next two weeks, just again, going back to plow the fields. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, I studied super hard, but I also had the most amazing eight and a half by 11 piece of paper with theorems and sample equations and everything I needed as a point of reference to get through that freshman physics final. I aced it, ended up with a B in the class, and continued on through my engineering emphasis in education. So sometimes, even though when it looks like the chips are down, there'll be challenges you have to have overcome, right? Time management, trying to fit in practice with studying, all of which will pay itself forward when you get into the workplace. Let me talk to you a little bit about when I was a new engineer at Intel and plowing the field. I go into the fab, I was a process engineer. I go into my equipment area, and who's there to greet me? The technicians. How much respect did they have for my piece of paper that said I was a degreed engineer for Penn, from Penn State? Absolutely zero. They handed me a piece of scotch card. You know those little green pillow pad things? And I said, what am I supposed to do with this? They said, you're gonna crawl up on that piece of equipment right there, and you're gonna get on your hands and knees and you're gonna take it apart. And then you're gonna take that piece of Brillo pad and you're gonna scrub. I didn't go to school for four years to be scrubbing a piece of equipment in a factory. They said, get up on that piece of equipment, take it apart and start scrubbing. And that's exactly what I did. Um, and then I put it back together and they knew when I put it back together that I wouldn't put it back together right the first time. So they laughed at me. Then they showed me how to do it right. What did I learn from that experience that paid itself forward? Number one, I learned how to take my equipment apart and put it back together. That's the test technical aspects of the learning. What did I learn and gain second out of that experience? I gained the respect of the people on the floor that ran that plant every single day. And thirdly, I built my network. I built a network with my fellow engineers. I built a network with the technicians and I built a network with the operators that worked in that area. Then I was given a pretty big problem to solve. Improve the yields within your area. Huh, seems pretty straightforward, right? That's the kind of thing that they expect you to do when you're an engineer. I'm running 5,000 wafers through a week. That's what we make, right, at Intel wafers. You have to run 5,000, I want you to run 5,200 next week. So that was a technical 
example of how my engineering coursework helped me to solve the problem. What else did I extract out of that experience? Did I go sit in my cube and go by myself, right? I'm going to sit down, I'm going to get my little piece of paper, and I'm going to figure out how to solve this problem. No. I was surrounded by engineers that had worked in that factory for 10 years. So I went over to one engineer, I'm like, hey, what did you do to optimize yields? Then I went to another engineer and said, what did you do to optimize yields in your area? And I extracted learnings from all of them. It taught me, again, how to network, how to communicate, and how to not have to reinvent the wheel every time, right? You can learn a lot from people who have been there before. But you do learn how, when you're resourceful, when you seek out help, that all pays itself forward again. What are some of the things that I had to do to plow the field? Well, we have to do market models. How many of these are we going to sell in this market six years from now? It is massive amount of spreadsheet work. Massive. What do we do in terms of loading the factory? How many of these microprocessors do we have to build? Well, it was the Christmas holiday. I had my laptop on my lap, and I was just working away managing spreadsheets. Was it the most overwhelmingly satisfying job I've ever had? No, but it taught me some basics around factory loading and how to do some modeling techniques. Again, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Problem solving. Sometimes you're in a marketing position and they'll go, okay, so we have 87% market segment share here, but our job in corporate America is continuing to drive revenue growth, right? What does Wall Street look for, look for? Yeah, what you did yesterday is good, but you need to tell me how you're going to grow three years from now and what new markets. It's a very ambiguous problem to solve but another example of where you apply some of those skills that you learned in terms of problem solving and apply them to your real life job situation. And then finally, I had to move from engineering to marketing. And what was challenging about it? Well, all of the examples that I've given you have been pretty straightforward, right? Move yields from 95% to 97%. You have equipment that's down. It needs to be up. It's very tangible, very measurable. When you go to marketing, it's exceptionally ambiguous, and your ability and your impact and how you measure that impact can be challenging. I still have to sit in a whole lot of meetings, spending a whole lot of time, going through a whole lot of spreadsheets, figuring out budgets. How much money are we spending? How many heads are we have on a specific program? Is it meeting what we said it was going to meet? If it's over, why? And it's very tedious work, but it's work that has to be done. What kind of problems were we solving now? Now we're talking about solving problems around how we transform industries. We have an industry communications infrastructure that's built equipment the same way for the last 40 years. We want to bring speed, velocity, innovation to that industry. That's what we do now, and what I do now is my role in setting the vision and the strategy for my organization. And then finally, we build products. We build products for customers, and there's on occasion a customer who will run and find an issue with that product. And when they do, you have a cranky customer that is gating revenue because of your product. And in that case, you've got to find a way to, number one, preserve the relationship, and number two, get them back up and running it on their feet. So again, as you look at doing what you got to do, solving problems, overcoming challenges, you'll use those skills in college, you'll use those skills in your first job out of college, and you'll use those same core skills 23 years later in your career. You got to work hard. Nothing comes easy. Engineering school's not easy. Getting a job's not easy. You have to work hard. You have to work hard in your coursework. You have to be a problem solver. You have to overcome those life challenges. You have to work in the summer, get internships, so you can be in a position that when you're being interviewed and you're seeking out that first job opportunity, you're in a position to be successful. Sometimes you got to do what it takes. Sometimes you got to manage the Excel spreadsheet or scrub the equipment. Sometimes you got to take a class that you may not know the applicability of it. 
but someday you will. And don't give up. Everyone in this room has the opportunity, based on the program that I've seen, offered to you to be successful. Don't pass out that opportunity. Because at the end, there's jobs to be had, there's demand to be filled, and there's opportunities to truly change the world based on the engineering work that you could put forward. I got a great life. My engineering degree got me my job. My job affords me opportunities to see the world. I've been to China. I've been all over Europe. I've been all across the United States working with customers solving problems. And I've built amazing relationships. There is a guy that's one of the founders of, of uh, Intel's name was Robert Noyce. And uh, when you walk in the building, our, our headquarters is in Santa Clara, and you walk in the main lobby, and this quote's over the top. It says, don't be encumbered by history. history. Go off and do something wonderful. Engineers are the people that make this statement come to fruition. It's the Mark Zuckerbergs. It's the Steve Jobs. It's the Bill Gateses that have done amazing things in terms of technology and innovation that have changed how we live our lives every day. And in this audience, there's a tremendous opportunity for you guys to do the same. So in closing, just to stick with the theme, just stay with it. Keep plowing the fields, keep problem solving, and keep beating down those challenges.